Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. Today in this video, we will see how to interface BME280 sensor with STM32. This sensor can measure the temperature, pressure, and relative humidity. I have written a library for it, which I will upload on the GitHub, and you can get it from there. As we progress along the video, I will also explain the code, and how you can write one yourself using the datasheet. The library covers a lot of things, but there are still few things which you need to manually implement. So watch the video carefully, as you might need to make changes in the library, based on what requirements you have from the sensor. This is the datasheet for the device. Here I have highlighted few important things, that I will cover in today's video. I will leave the link to this datasheet in the description. Let's start with Cube ID and create a new project. I am using STM32 F103 controller. Give some name to the project and click Finish. First of all, I am enabling the external crystal for the clock. The blue pill have 8 MHz crystal on board and I want the system to run at maximum 72 MHz clock. Enable the serial wire debug. The sensor can use both the I2C and SBI for communication. You can use either of those, but I am going to go with the I2C. Enable the I2C interface and leave everything to default. We have the two pins for data and clock. Before going any further in the video, let's see the sensor and the connection with Blue Pill. Here is the BME280, and as you can see it have the pinout for both SBI and I2C. Here I am connecting it with the Blue Pill. It's powered with 3.3 volts, and there are two pull-up resistors, each 4700 ohms, connected between the clock and data pins and the 3.3 volts. Pull-up resistors must be used while using the I2C communication. Also one very important thing, I have grounded the SDO pin. Keep this in mind, as it will be used in the addressing of the device. Now connect the PB6 to the clock pin, and PB7 to the SDI pin, that is data pin. That completes the connection. Let's generate the project now. First thing we will do is, copy the library files into our project. So copy the C file into the source directory, and header file into the include directory. Let's take a look at the source file. Here first we have to define the I2C we are using. As I set up the I2C1, so I am leaving it unchanged. The next thing is the 64-bit support. If your configuration supports 64-bit integers, then leave this as 1, or else to use the 32-bit integers, uncomment the 32-bit support and comment out 64-bit. The next is the address of the device. As mentioned in the datasheet, the 7 bits of the address are these. Here X depends on the SDO pin, and if you remember I grounded that pin, and therefore the X is 0 in my case. The slave address will consist of these 7 address bits, along with the read or write bit. So the address will be 1110-1100, which makes up 0 cross EC. These variables will store the corresponding values, and they are externally defined here. So you should define them in the main file. The rest of the code should be unchanged for default configuration. Let me explain how this works. The sensor can work with three different modes. 
in sleep mode no measurements are performed. But the registers are accessible, and therefore you can wake the sensor and perform the measurement. Then comes the forced mode. Here the sensor performs a single measurement and goes into the sleep mode. For the next measurement, you need to wake the sensor again. I have added a function for this. You need to call this wake up function before doing the measurement. This is useful in situations like weather monitoring, where the data does not need to be read very frequently. Basically, it will measure all three parameters, and then go back to sleep mode. The next is the normal mode. Here the sensor does the measurement and goes into the standby. The data rate depends on the measurement time and standby time. The current consumption will obviously be higher, but it allows you to continuously monitor the data. In this tutorial, I will be using the normal mode. There are few important things to note about the measurements. The humidity measurement have a fixed resolution of 16 bits. The resolution for the temperature and pressure depends on the fact that if you are using the IIR filter or not. If using the filter, then the resolution will be 20 bits. Otherwise, it depends on the oversampling setting as shown here. IIR filter can be used to avoid the fluctuations in the pressure and temperature measurements. I will be using the IIR filter in this tutorial, and this library does not support the measurements without filter, at least for now. Then we have some examples for the settings, which we will see later. Let's check the source file again. Here the first function is the trim read. This reads the trimming values that are stored in the non-volatile memory of the sensor. Every sensor comes pre-programmed with these values, and they don't change with reset or anything. We need to read these values and then use them in the calculations ahead. As shown in the datasheet, we must read the values from these registers, and I am going to name them same as it's named here. Also note that some of these are unsigned, and others are signed values. So that's why I have defined them separately. Then we start reading from 0 by 88 address, and we burst read 25 registers. This means we read up to 0xA1, which is dig H1. Again we have to read from E1 to E7. This is done here, we are reading 7 bytes from E1. And finally we will arrange the data, just how it's arranged in the data sheet. Then comes the configuration, which we will see later. Next is the reading of raw data. It's mentioned in the datasheet that we must burst read the data in order to avoid the possible mix-ups between the measurements. We will read the registers F7 to FE. This is done here, we are reading from this register. It is defined in the header file, and its address is F7. And we will read 8 bytes from here, which will include the registers up to FE. As I mentioned in the beginning, this library is using the filter, and this is why the pressure and temperature are 20 bits in resolution. We will calculate the raw values for all three parameters using the registers we just read. After this we have the compensation formulas on page 25 of the datasheet. These formulas uses the raw values for temperature, pressure and humidity, and gives us the refined results. We need to use them exactly in the same way.
so this is what that is. I just copied them from the datasheet, and put them here. Note that the pressure uses the 64-bit integer here. But in case your machine doesn't support it, there is a 32-bit alternative also. I have included that in the library, so all you need to do is, define the support as I mentioned in the beginning. Alright now we will take a look at the registers. The first register is the ID register. It's a read-only register, and it returns the ID of the device, which should be 0 by 60. I have included it in the code. Before reading the raw values, the code checks for the ID. If the ID is 0 by 60, only then it goes for the measurement. The next register is reset. If we write 0xb6 to this register, the device will soft reset. The next register is for the humidity control. Here we need to select the oversampling for the humidity. If you want to skip the humidity calculation, just set the oversampling to zero. This configuration is controlled by the BME280 config function. Here the parameters are the oversampling settings for all three parameters, then we have the mode, the standby time, and finally the filter configuration. First of all we will read the trimming parameters, as it only needs to be done once. Then I am performing the soft reset. Then write the oversampling data for the humidity. These oversampling parameters are defined in the header file, and you can use them instead of writing a hexadecimal value. After writing the data, we will read the same register to make sure the changes were done in the register. The next register is control measure register. It controls the oversampling of temperature and pressure, along with the mode of the sensor. Here I am shifting the temperature data by 5, the pressure data by 2, and the first two bits are for the mode. The next register is the config register. It controls the standby time for the normal mode, along with the filter coefficients for the IIR filter. You can also use 3 wire SBI, and enable it from here. Below are the tables for both standby time, and filter coefficients. I have defined them in the header file also. And at last we have the data registers, where we read the data from the pressure, temperature and humidity. As mentioned here, this is how the 20-bit data is arranged in these registers. This is enough explaining I hope, let's write the code now. I have defined these configurations as per my setup. I am using I2C1, and also my system supports 64-bit variables. Let's copy this. In the main file, we will include the BME280 header file. Now define the variables to store the data. Inside the main function, we will call the BME280 config function. There are some examples provided in the datasheet. For example, for weather monitoring, we can use the forced mode, with one sample per minute. The pressure, temperature, and humidity oversampling all should be set to 1. Similarly there are other examples, but in this tutorial, I will use the indoor navigation. Here I will use the normal mode, with standby time of 0.5 milliseconds. The pressure oversampling is 16, 
and that for temperature is 2, and 1 for humidity. So let's set the temperature over sampling to 2, pressure to 16, and humidity to 1. The mode should be set to normal mode. The standby time is set to 0.5. And at last, the filter coefficient is 16. With this configuration, the output data rate is 25 Hz. Inside the while loop, we will call the BME280 measure function. This will handle all the measurement, and store the values in the variables that we defined earlier. Alright everything is done, now build the code, and debug it. Let's run it. You can see the values of temperature in degrees Celsius, pressure in pascals, and relative humidity as a percentage. I am going to put my finger on the sensor. See the value of the temperature rising. I kept the sensor in the refrigerator for a while, and see the temperature and humidity values. The temperature is rising, and humidity is decreasing. They both are slowly tending towards the room condition. This is it for this video. I hope you understood how I wrote each function, and also how to use them. I will post this library on the GitHub, so that I can modify it in the near future, and also include some other parameters like altitude measurement. The link to GitHub is in the description. This is all for today. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.